Let's talk about stoichiometry. That's the quantitative relationship in chemical reactions. Stoichiometry is the calculation of the quantities of reactants and products involved in a chemical reaction. It is based on the balanced chemical equation and on the relationship between mass and moles. In other words, molar mass is going to be an important concept here, going from grams to moles and moles to grams and mole to mole ratios. Such calculations are fundamental to most quantitative work in chemistry. What we were discussing deals with mole to mole ratios. This is a very important concept and is the basis of many calculations. The balanced chemical equation can be interpreted in the number of molecules, but generally chemists interpret equations as mole to mole relationships. Let's look at the following reaction. Got nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gases gives me two ammonia gases. We can look at this on a molecule basis if we want. If I have one molecule of N2 and three molecules of H2, I form two molecules of ammonia. However, we don't really deal in molecules. We tend to do things on a mole basis. So we can do the same thing, same ratio, uh, same ratios, but scaled up on a mole basis. So I can take one mole of nitrogen, meaning Avogadro's number of um, nitrogen atoms, plus three moles of hydrogen, meaning three times Avogadro's number of molecules of hydrogen, we form two moles of ammonia, meaning two times Avogadro's number of ammonia ions. Excuse me, ammonia compound. Well, we can also look at this on a mass basis. Okay, if I got one mole of N2, I know molecular weight, that's 28.02 grams of N2. Uh, one mole of H2 is 2.02, .02, and I got three of them. And it's 17.04 grams of ammonia, and I got two of those. Do the math, it gives me 28.02 plus 6.06, .06, which is 34.08 grams for ammonia. Add them up. You can see on my reactant side, I have 34.08 grams, and on my product side, I have 34.08 grams. This is how things are supposed to work. If the number of each particular atom is the same on both sides in your balance equation, then the law of conservation of mass will be preserved, and the mass of your reactants will equal the mass of your products. Now suppose, suppose we wish to determine the number of moles of ammonia we could obtain from 4.8 moles of hydrogen. We'll assume in this case that nitrogen is in excess, which means that hydrogen is my limiting factor and will dictate the amount of product that will be formed. Once all the hydrogen is gone, the reaction is going to stop. Okay, I've got to have both components to make the product. We should realize that we have conversion factors that exist from mole to mole ratios available from a balanced equation that we can get from one species to another. So there's many different factors in a balanced equation. For example, I know for one mole of nitrogen, I can produce two moles of ammonia. So a one to two ratio from the balanced equation. I know I got three moles of hydrogen on the reactant side to every two moles of ammonia produced on the product side. And I have one mole of nitrogen and I'm going to need three moles of hydrogen to form my products. So I have three relationships, but in fact I got six because I have the reciprocals as well. In this particular example, I want to take moles of hydrogen and figure out how many moles of ammonia that I can form. So which one of these will help me out? Well, it's going to be the middle one where I have the ratio between hydrogen and ammonia. Now, which way am I going to place this? Well, I want the moles of hydrogen to cancel, so it's going to be the reciprocal of that particular uh, conversion factor. So I'll plug that in. That gives me two moles of ammonia to three moles of hydrogen. My moles cancel. Multiply it out. That means I can produce 3.2 moles of ammonia with 4.8 moles of hydrogen. Let's look at another example. How many grams of HCl are required to react with 5 grams of manganese 4 oxide according to this equation? So in this case, if I have 5 grams of manganese 4 oxide, I want to know how much HCl needs to be used to consume up all that manganese 4 oxide. So I have 5 grams of the manganese 4 oxide, I'm looking for the number of grams of HCl. So I'm going to start with my grams of manganese oxide, 4 oxide. Now 
Now, anytime I go from one species to the other, I have to do it on based on moles. So my first step is going to take the molar mass of manganese 4 oxides, convert that into moles. That's the molar mass of manganese oxide. So then my grams cancel. So now I'm in moles of manganese 4 oxide. Well, to get from one substance to the other, the only way I can do that is mole to my ratio. So I'll take that ratio from my balance equation. It's a 4 to 1 ratio. Gives me my mole to mole. So I got for every 4 moles of HCl, 1 mole of manganese 4 oxide. I'm going to put it in this fashion before I can cancel out my moles of manganese 4 oxide. And now I want mass, so I got to get back to mass of HCl through the molar mass. So I had to use the molar mass of my manganese 4 oxide and the molar mass of my HCl. Multiplying out, I get my total grams, which is 8.39 grams of HCl. So if I have 8.39 grams of HCl and 5.0 grams of manganese 4 oxide, there would be none of those reactants left and only products because I will consume both my reactants. To get from one substance to another, it requires the use of mole to mole ratios, which come from the balance equation. Here's another example. How many grams of CO2 gas can be produced from 1.0 gram, kilograms of iron 3 oxide? And notice it doesn't tell us anything about carbon monoxide there, so we assume that's an excess. excess. So the limiting factor we're assuming is the, the iron 3 oxide. So I have 1 kilogram, I assume excess of my other reactant. I want to know how many grams of CO2. Once again, I'll start off with my grams my kilograms of my iron 3 oxide. To go from one substance to the other, I get the moles, so my next step will be molar mass. Um, but before that, I'm going to change that from kilograms to grams, this way I can follow my units. So I have my kilograms to grams. Next will be my molar mass. So now I can get my grams to cancel. Now I'm in moles of my iron 3 oxide. Now I have to get from that to my moles of my substance of CO2, so that will come from my balance equation, which is a 1 to 3 ratio. So I had 3 moles of CO2 to 1 mole of iron 3 oxide. I put it in this fashion for I can get things to cancel. I want grams, so I'm going to have to go to molar mass of CO2 to get it to grams. So now I have Moles of CO2 cancels. I'm in grams. Multiply it out. I get 827 grams of CO2. Homework 24 deals with some stoichiometry relationships.